Morning watch fans, thanks for coming back and having a look at my reviews. I hope you're enjoying them so far. Please like and subscribe and please don't be afraid to send me some feedback in the messages, what you like, what you don't. Be gentle, but be honest. I just want to try and make it as good as I can for everyone. So I thought today, I'd just have a look at this lovely Bell & Ross Vintage 123 GMT Officer. This is a watch that's been in my collection for a little while, but it's making its way out of it now, so I thought I'd better get it onto the video or uh, it wouldn't make it. So, it's a classic military looking watch. It's 42 millimeters across. It's got a really large dial, 37 millimeters of it is the dial. As you can see, it's got these applied silver colored um, Arabic numerals at 12, three, six, and nine. Um, it's a GMT. So we've got the extra fourth hand here showing us the GMT time. It, passes around the bezel once every 24 hours. As you can see now, it's pointing to midday. Um, you could independently change this hand. Um, you turn the crown in one direction to change the date and another direction to change the GMT hand. It's got lovely loom in the hands there, which I'll try and show you in a minute. Um, and the black dial really stands out against the silver hands and the white second hand. Um, it's really, it's a beautiful watch. It looks great on the wrist and it kind of, it, almost from its simplicity, um, it's, uh, it looks very classic. It comes on this rubber strap, um, a Bell & Ross rubber strap, and it fits into a 22 millimeter lug. So it's really easy to um, uh, accessorize this watch with different straps. Um, you can have great fun putting all kinds of different leathers and even bracelets on it. Um, Obviously, it's got this lovely display case back, which shows us the, um, well, they call it the Bell & Ross Caliber 0 .303. Um, it's actually an ETA um, 28932, which is the ETA GMT caliber that we find in all sorts of places in the old Seamaster 300 um, from the uh, about 2010. Um, it's in all the, lots of the Sin watches. Um, it's in the Christopher Ward watches. It's uh, it's all over the place, um, some of the Breitling watches. So it's it's a really good movement, which is easily um, easily serviceable. I mean, lots of people can service it. It's not crazy to get parts for it or anything. Um, and it's it keeps really good time. Um, and obviously it's lovely to have that uh, see-through case back there. 100 meters water resistant. Um, it doesn't have a screw down crown, this watch. The, the crown doesn't screw down, um, which I suppose being a kind of officer's stroke dress watch in the military style. I mean, it's more dressy than it is military with everything is polished. I mean, the thing shines, you know, like the top of um, the Empire State Building or something. Um, and uh, it, so it's very dressy and catches the light. Um, the crown doesn't screw down. How's that? really nice and symbol on there, the Bell & Ross logo. Um, so it's only 12.2 millimeters thick, which is really quite slight and rest, easily goes under your cuff. Um, I've already told you that it's 42 millimeters across. Um, it's got sapphire crystal on the front and the back, which is great. Um, and um, I think that to be honest with you, the reason I was drawn to this watch is because of the the design cues, I saw this first at QP, um, the, uh, the the show that's in London, or used to be in London at the Saatchi Gallery in November. And um, I f when I first saw this, the thing that came into my mind was the old Rolex Explorer 1655, which is the Steve McQueen model um, before the last iteration. Um, it wasn't ever very popular, but it had the large orange hand like this, and it had obviously the fixed stainless steel dial with the black numbers. It, this is not a homage of this watch, this, this of that watch. This watch doesn't look exactly like that watch. It, it's it's definitely completely different. But for me, it just kind of reminded me of that and that really classic um, design, which I like, you know. And of course, those things are north of about 17 or 18 thousand pounds now being sort of very rare and Rolex collectors are all over them, etc. So um, I just really thought that this was a, this was a great watch, um, which had um, good design cues and uh, and I really liked it. So I just I'll just show it to you on the on the wrist for a moment. I'll just take off this monster that I'm wearing there and um, put this one on just to give you a quick view of it. The strap is really comfortable. It's very soft rubber. It's not really hard like any of those old Seiko straps you might have tried. We have to almost warm them up to get them to supple enough to go around your wrist. It's really comfortable. Um, it's got that lovely Bell & Ross buckle. Um, so it's a 22 millimeter this end. I think it's 18 or 20 that end, but it's easy to accessorize this as well if you wanted to, um, or to take that off and put it on other straps, I should say. Uh, 
and there we are, very clear to read. It's got the date there, hiding between the four and the five number there, quite stealthy. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really lovely. So just to give you an idea of size, okay, that 42 millimeters, it it looks it weighs bigger than that 42 millimeters because of dial. So much of it is dial. So if I just show you it up against something that you all will know. So that Rolex is 40 millimeters, the Bell & Ross is 42, but look how much of the Bell & Ross is dial compared to the Rolex. I mean, that uh, the, the turning bezel on the Rolex obviously um, gives you an extra functionality, but it's uh, it takes away from the size of the dial. So the Bell & Ross is so much easier to read at a glance, I suppose. Um, there we are. So, um, so I'll put that back to 12 o'clock for those of you with the... There we are. So the Bell and Ross 123 GMT officer from the vintage range. Cracking watch. I think it retails for about two and a half thousand, but you can pick them up for less than that for sure. Um, really lovely watch. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And please don't be afraid to tell me if you think it's rubbish or what you do like. Um, or if you've got any suggestions for what I could or couldn't do. Oh, just before we finish, I was just going to try and show you the loom. So let me just uh, close the curtains here. There we go. So um, as you can see, it's got the thin hands, but the looming over is easily good enough. It lasts all night. You've got it in the hands uh, on the, tw uh, the, the hour, the minute and the 24 hour hand. Obviously, it's not really a fair comparison next to the Rolex because it's got loads of loom everywhere um, and the seat could be even more ridiculous look at that that's going to wake you up at night so uh, but as you can see the loom is easily good enough stealthy but functional great watch thanks very much